Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. You know, there are a lot of recipes that I make pretty often that I really love that are super easy to make. And I don't cook them with you because usually one of two reasons. Either there are way too many steps with lots of pauses in between. And so it seems like it won't make a very cohesive podcast. Or they're so easy that it seems ridiculous to even think about trying to cook it with you because it's just put some things in a pan and you're done. So I thought I could use this quick bite forum to share some of those things with you so that you can join me in appreciating how fast and easy these are. Today, I thought we'd talk about pizza. I make homemade pizza. We eat homemade pizza more often, way, way more often than we eat pizza from a pizzeria. Now, that's not because we don't like the pizzas from the pizzerias. We do, but they're expensive. So sometimes it's better to just make it at home. And you know, what I want to share with you is a way to make a pizza, a really good pizza at home without advanced planning. In other words, you could decide at five o'clock that you want homemade pizza and you can have it on the table by six, maybe even before that, depending on how much stuff you want on the top of it. This is one of the ones that is both super easy, but also that just takes a lot of different steps that would take a lot of pauses in between. And I know you don't want to listen to my break music that often in a single podcast. So here we be. This does not use a traditional yeast crust. And of course, that has got its own flavor to it. I don't do that because while I love a good bubbly yeasty crust really a lot, You can't decide to do that the same evening that you want to eat the pizza. It's really, to be good, got to be started at least a day ahead. And I don't often know ahead of time, by that far at least, that I'm going to want pizza for dinner. So I use a non-yeast, a no-rise kind of pizza crust, and chances are good that you have your ingredients at home. In fact, chances are good that you have almost all the ingredients you need already in your house. And this is worth a try. I find that it's very satisfying and I like the crust a lot. It takes so little time to make the crust. I don't even want to start by telling you how to do that. We're going to start with the sauce because the sauce, the longer it sits on a low heat on the stove, the more intense the flavors are going to be. So here's what I do. I get one of those small six ounce cans of tomato paste and I open it up and I scoop about half of it into a small saucepan. And the other half, you can do two things with. You can either scoop it into a small Ziploc bag and freeze it, or you can actually just put foil or plastic over the top of the can and freeze it. And then next time you want to do this again, you just take that whole can out of the freezer and set it in a little bit of warm water, just enough to loosen the size a little bit. And then you use your can opener on the bottom It's really one of those things that you think, why didn't I know that earlier? After the bottom has been cut all the way around, you push on it to squeeze the tomato paste out of the open top that you had from the first time you used it. (laughs) It's, It's a really easy, convenient way to save tomato paste. Anyhow, you're going to put that half that you took out into the small saucepan And you just add a little olive oil, maybe a couple of teaspoons and a couple of tablespoons of water and you stir it and you heat it over low heat. And then if it doesn't seem like pizza sauce consistency to you, you add a little more water until it does, but you want it pretty thick. You don't want it like a spaghetti sauce. So that'll be too thin. And then you can throw in a clove of minced garlic or even garlic powder, a little salt, a little Italian herbs to taste. You do want to taste it. And you want to be careful with the salt because there's a lot of salty stuff that goes on top of a pizza. So you don't want to oversalt the sauce because then it's really going to dehydrate you, which is what I find. I used to drink beer with pizza always. That's a great combo. Can't do it anymore. I discovered that I really am so dehydrated the next day. I wake up with a dry mouth and craving liquids actually retaining water because of all the salt. So I've quit drinking beer with it, and I drink water with it to try to offset some of that sodium. Anyhow, that's really neither here nor there. But you just created your pizza sauce, and just let it 
heat over low heat for a little while. Don't let it boil or it'll start spitting at you. And then we start work on the crust. The crust takes two ingredients. It takes one cup of plain Greek yogurt. That's the one thing you may not have in your house. And it takes a cup of self-rising flour. Now you think, oh golly, what does she think I have self-rising flour in the house? I don't. Well, guess what? We're going to make it. It is so easy to make. You put in a cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. You stir that up, and voila, you've got self-rising flour. If you like this recipe after you try it and you think you might want to make it a lot, you can make your self-rising flour ahead of time. Just create a container and use those proportions that I gave you. Just make that recipe several times until your container is full and then you have a container of self-rising flour. There you go. So easy. You don't have to go out and buy it, although that's possible too. You can find it in the grocery store. You combine that with a cup of Greek yogurt and you've got your crust. What you do is you stir that together. It's actually cool if you can do it in a mixer with a dough hook, but you can totally do this by hand. It just takes a little longer and it's stickier, but you add flour as you need it until the dough is mostly no longer sticky. And then you let it sit for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. What that does is help the gluten do whatever the heck it is it's doing. If you start to roll out your crust, and it elastic squeezes back into its shape. If it does that severely, it means you started to roll it too soon. So give it a couple more minutes. It will do that anyway. You know what I mean? It's like shrinks back. It doesn't want to stay where you roll it. It'll do that a little bit anyhow, but you don't want it to do it a lot. And then you just take a rolling pin and you want to roll it out on parchment paper and you dust it with flour as you need to, to keep it from sticking to the rolling pin. And I really like a really thin crust. So I roll it out as far as I can go. And that gets me about a probably a 14 inch pizza. If you're doing it thick, this is going to be kind of a small pizza and you may want to double your crust recipe. But thin works really well for this pizza. Oh, you know what? I forgot to say that there's probably a do ahead if you're thinking about actually doing this. The very first thing you need to do is preheat your oven. You need it pretty hot. I did mine the other day at 435 degrees. I usually do it at about 425, but the 435 worked great. If you happen to have a pizza stone, you probably don't even need this quick bite because you're already doing something fancy with yeast. On the other hand, maybe you'd appreciate knowing a faster way to do it. But if you don't have a pizza stone, just put a cookie sheet in the oven on the very lowest shelf close as you can get to the bottom. If the cookie sheet has sides, like a little lip, just turn it upside down so that it becomes your flat surface to put your pizza on. Now, the only thing is, of course, you do not want your pizza to exceed the size of that cookie sheet or it's going to slop over the sides and potentially spill stuff on the bottom of your oven. So we've dealt with the crust and we've dealt with the sauce. Now, using a pastry brush or a spoon or even your fingers, you want to spread a little olive oil over the outside edges of the crust so they don't get too hard and dry. Now, you don't want to cook up a cracker here, and the olive oil will help. You also can go ahead and put olive oil on the whole crust if you want to do that. That does sometimes add flavor, and it keeps the sauce from seeping into the crust. So you scoop all that sauce onto the crust, you spread it until it's mostly even. Put a handful or two of grated Parmesan evenly over the sauce. At this point, I like to add chopped sweet onions because I don't really want them on top. I kind of want them to be part of the personality of the pie. And I also put my ground sausage, if I'm using any, I put that in here at this point. If you have provolone, break it into pieces and distribute that over the sauce. This is optional, but it adds a lot of flavor and actually notice a lot of extra salt, but it also adds more cheese. More cheese is always a good thing on a pizza. Sprinkle that really generously with mozzarella and then add your other toppings. It's also kind of fun to use some fresh mozzarella in addition to the regular shredded stuff. 
it just makes a really interesting texture and a lot of stretchy pull that's pretty fun and it looks beautiful. Uh, you almost always use olives and sometimes pepperoni, sun-dried tomatoes, artichokes, mushrooms, you know, you do you, okay? Whatever you like. And then sprinkle some more shredded mozzarella over the top. If you want to use some fresh herbs, don't put them on now. You want to save them till the pizza comes out of the oven so you don't burn them. They will kind of wilt on the top of the hot pizza so that it'll look like it belongs there and not just some kind of green thing sticking up. So don't worry about that. Just add them after the pizza comes out. I also, the reason I made a pizza two nights ago was because I had a fresh, large, homegrown mortgage lifter tomato and I wanted to find a way for it to shine. And I love slices of fresh tomato on my pizza. There is something about that extra zip, that extra brightness, that deep tomato flavor. I mean, I do it even with store-bought tomatoes if I have to. Although I'm picky about which ones because most don't seem to have much flavor. But a homegrown tomato right out of the garden? Oh my God. You put that on top of the pizza. It's, um, it's the best part of the pizza, believe it or not. I've been known to use a chicken and Italian sausage. There's one that I really like from, I think it's called Iberio, Iberico, something like that. Anyway, don't put the tomatoes on. <laughs> Sorry little tangent there. Don't put the tomatoes on. Don't put the herbs on. And then keeping the pizza on the parchment paper. If you have a pizza slide, a pizza peel, that's really helpful at this point. If not, it's uh, going to be a little trickier. You might be able to do it from your cutting board. But what you want to do is get the whole pizza with the parchment paper onto either the pizza stone or that cookie sheet you've turned upside down. You can't do this just on a rack. It's got to have a flat surface or it's going to cook funny and you're not going to get some kind of nice crusty brownness, which is what we're looking for. You know, in a fancy pizza parlor, that's not even the right word anymore, but you know what I mean. They have a pizza oven that cooks really hot and the bottom and the sides of the crust get kind of blackened a little bit. That's what your pizza stone can do for you here. You don't want it so burned that it tastes burned, but you want it nice and browned on the bottom and just a tiny bit crispy. So that's why we're doing it on a surface and not just on the rack. Anyway, you're trying to get the whole parchment paper with the pizza on top of it onto your surface. And I have a pizza stone that I bought because I make this pizza so often. You set your timer for five minutes your oven's been hot, I hope, for a while at this point. After five minutes, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole process of what I do. Now, you can leave this pizza on the parchment paper the whole time. It makes it a lot easier to get it out of the oven if you do that. There are two reasons I don't do that. First, the parchment paper gets really burned and fragile and really will flake in your hands. And second, the bottom of the crust doesn't get as nicely browned as if it's flat direct on the surface. You want to use a spatula or you want to use your pizza peel and you're going to gently push against the edge of the pizza to hold it in place while you pull the parchment paper out from underneath it. Leaving the pizza without the paper on your pizza stone or your cookie sheet. You can use your fingers because the paper is not going to be too hot to touch. It is going to be turning black and burned and may fall apart and crumble in your fingers. It's okay. It's really okay. You just need to be really careful not to touch the hot stone or the cookie sheet. Just pull the paper only. Close the oven and throw away that parchment paper. And you set the timer for four minutes. When the edges are starting to brown a little and the cheese is bubbling, your pizza is done. And then you use the pizza peel, maybe some tongs would even do it, to pull that pizza out of the oven, to slide it from the hot cookie sheet to a cool cookie sheet, or your pizza peel or whatever, so that you can get it out of the oven and slice it up. That's when you add the fresh ingredients, the tomatoes, the herbs. You can also add a light drizzle of olive oil if you want. And that's it. You have a pizza in less than an hour on a nice homemade crust 
that'll have a little chew to it. It just won't have that yeasty flavor to it. The sauce is good because you made it to your own specifications, so you know you're going to like it. The toppings are your own choice because you decided what to put on it and how much of each. If you find yourself wanting to do this a lot, there's actually a very cool thing that I use instead of the parchment paper. Now, I love parchment paper, but because it gets so blackened and burned, sometimes that can make your oven smoke, which by the way, you're cooking pretty hot and your oven's probably going to smoke no matter what, especially if cheese or whatever drips off and it burns. So you might need to clean your oven before you use it again, or you'll be dealing with a lot of smoke the next time you cook. Anyway, I have this thing called a nonstick heat pressing sheet. It is from a company called SS Chauvin. It's PTFE Teflon sheet, and it's perfect for this. It says you can use it for heat pressing, for ironing, for baking and for crafting. It's just a Teflon sheet, but it's like a fabric. So it rolls up and it's just this kind of thin fabric sheet. When you put that under the pizza, instead of the parchment paper, it doesn't burn, it doesn't blacken, and it slides out from under that pizza so easily. Sometimes the parchment paper can get stuck just a little bit to the bottom of the pizza, which means that your pizza's sliding around and getting in places and spots that you didn't want it to, and you have to somehow maneuver it back to where you started. This stuff, that doesn't happen. So if you find yourself doing this recipe quite a lot, see if you can find these sheets. They're made in China. That's not my favorite thing, but um, they're really cool. FDA approved. There you go. Washable and tear resistant, easy to trim to any shape and size, heat resistant to 600 degrees, 100% nonstick, and a thousand uses. There you go. There's a pitch for a product that I don't get paid to do the pitch for. <laughs> now, one last note. It may take you several tries to get the oven temperature and cooking time right. The instructions that I just gave you are from my oven and they were perfected over a number of attempts to get this right. So both the timing and the temperature have been tailored specifically to my oven. I have seen a lot of suggestions where they recommend a hotter oven, 450 to 500 degrees, and longer cooking. In my oven, the pizza burns if I do either of those things. I made a lot of pizzas before I got the formula right, and I'm sure it varies from oven to oven. Now, I hope my outlining all these steps at one time doesn't make this recipe seem complicated or long, because it's none of those things. Because think about it. You put a little tomato paste in a pan with a few liquids and some seasoning, and you let it heat. You put some Greek yogurt in a bowl with some flour, some baking powder, and some salt. You stir it up, and you're done with the crust. Sauce and crust. There you go. Everything else, you decided what to do. And again, the temperature and timing, I hope the ones that I just gave you will work. But only you can find that out. And you can do it in less than an hour. So next time you want pizza and you don't want to spend money on it, start looking around your kitchen. See what you've got. You probably already know almost anything can go on a pizza. If you make a really large pile of wet, goopy stuff on top of this crust, I don't know. It may not hold up. We keep ours pretty simple. And it's so easy to make and kind of fun to pull out a, a pizza that you made yourself, snap a picture of it, and share it on Instagram. Tune in next week to join me in cooking a brand new recipe. And two weeks from today, come back on here for another quick recipe. I think I'm just going to start doing those because why not? Heck, we can all use things that are simple, easy, few ingredients. So simple that I don't even need to do a real-time cooking podcast about them. Until next time, happy cooking! 